is called Soul Survivor for Cornerstone International Christian Radio. We broadcast for foundations of faith and truth across the earth. Today I will be talking about the cult of Jehovah's Witnesses. When we are looking at cults, we see a false prophet, a false gospel and a false Jesus. Galatians 1.8 says, For though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. Also 2 Corinthians 11.4 says, For if he that cometh preaches another Jesus whom we have not preached, or if you receive another spirit which ye have not received, or another gospel which you have not received, uh, accepted, ye might well bear with him. Matthew 24, 24 says, For there shall arise false Christs and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, inasmuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Now it says that if it were possible. So in other words, the very elect will not be deceived by it, but other people will be. So it's not possible to deceive the elect, but other people will fall for their deception. So Jesus warned us that there would be false prophets, gospels, and even false representations of himself. Let's take a look into the beliefs and origins of the Jehovah's Witnesses to show why they have all three of those in them. Who do Jehovah's Witnesses say Jesus is? They say Jesus Christ is Jehovah's son, but is not equal to God, and that Jehovah created Jesus first and then created everything else through Jesus. They believe Jesus is an archangel known as Michael. Yet the archangel Michael in the Bible is proven to be just an angel created by God who advocates for Israel and protects her. They believe they believe that Jesus is not God's son, but yet the Bible tells us that Jesus is God and Son of God in the Trinity. Three persons, one God, Elohim in Hebrew. Let's look at where they get this idea from and why. Jehovah's Witnesses believe the teaching of Charles Taze Russell, founder of the Bible Student Movement and successive president of the Watchtower Society, Joseph Franklin, Brotherford and Nathan Homer Noor. The Watchtower is a non-political magazine published by the Jehovah's Witnesses back in 1879 and the Watchtower helps them to recruit new members to their cult. Jehovah's Witnesses Bible is known as the New Living Translation of the Holy Scriptures. They believe it is equal to all other Bibles but they have scriptures omitted from it and changed from the true Bible. One example is John 1 1. They say in the beginning was the word and the word was with God, and the word was a God, small g. Let's read what it says in the King James Bible about John 1.1. 1, 1. 1, 1, 1 in the King James Bible says, In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God, capital G. So that shows that the word, being Jesus, is God. So equal with God and God. Uh, so by pulling in their translation... By putting in their translation, the small g, to describe Jesus, they've made him out to be another god, so that there's more than one god out there. We shall see as we go along how much heresy Jehovah's Witnesses actually believe and teach. I will talk more about Jesus, who Jesus really is, towards the end of this talk. The Jehovah's Witnesses do not believe in hell or eternal punishment, but that the people will be annihilated and will know no more. This goes against what even Jesus himself said, and Jesus spoke more about hell than anyone else. Scriptures to prove hell is real in the Bible are Matthew 10, 28. And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Mark 9, 48. Where their worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. God created hell originally for the fallen angels, but not man. But now man, sorry, can end up there. The Bible says, Matthew twenty five forty one. Then shall he say also unto them on their left hand, Depart from me, you cursed into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. There are so many, including Revelation, a book that said God said should not be changed or added to. Twenty one eight. But the cowardly, unbelieving, the vile, the murderers, the sexually immoral, those who practice magic arts, the idolaters, and all liars, they will be consigned to the fiery lake of burning sulphur. This is the second death. So God is clear there is a punishment for sinners who do not repent and who misrepresent who Jesus is. We have seen the false Jesus they have and the prophets and don't even believe God's word in spirit and in truth. So let's see further what they say saves you. The Jehovah's Witnesses believe you get saved by Jesus, and we all already established it's a false Jesus, and works, not through grace but through faith alone. 
as they have a false Jesus, we can't believe that what they're saying on this anyway, because the Jesus of the Bible, it was his sinless blood that washes away our sins. So 2 Corinthians 5.21 says, For he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be righteous, may be made the righteousness of God. And Hebrews 9.22 tells us, Without the shedding of blood there is no remission of sins. When Jesus Christ died, he said, It is finished, meaning there need no, be no more need for sacrifice for sins. So how can work save you when it was God's blood sacrifice needed, not good works to wash away sins? Jehovah's Witnesses' belief looks similar to Christianity on the surface, but they say to be saved you must repent of your sins, faith by obeying Jesus' commandments demonstrated, so prove that you're saved by your works, have works and acts of obedience, um, and call name of Jehovah. But they also say they, that salvation is a free gift but unattainable without good works. What good works have they? anyway when they're spreading lies about who jesus is and what the bible says this goes against the bible ephesians 2 8 to 9 for by grace you are saved through faith that not of yourselves it is a gift of god not of works as any man should boast false jesus false prophets and false gospel what else is left we can just go through to a break now a little bit of music and uh yeah we'll come back after this break <laughs> Of the earth shall wail because of him. Even so, amen. 
I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, ending, saith the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. So Jesus Christ calls himself the Almighty in that passage, which is on par with God. So he is God. Also, we know John 1 in John, um, Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, before Abraham was, I am. And of course, God appeared to Moses in the burning bush, and when he was asked his name, he said, I am who I am. So the name of God is I am, and Jesus calls himself I am. He said, I am the bread of life. I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the resurrection, the life. I am the gate. I am the door. So Jesus always refers to himself as God. So by throwing him out as God and making him into a God, you're already denying his uh, divinity, his power, who he is, his authority. So Jesus was around before Abraham was born, and Jesus is called the son of both David and Abraham. Jesus is eternal. His name is Emmanuel and God with us. In Isaiah 53, Jesus was prophesied. So we'll read about that in Isaiah. Um, For shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root of dry ground. He hath no form nor comeliness. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we have hid it as we were our faces from him. He was despised and esteemed him not, and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem, esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. And the chastisement of our peace was put upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed, he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before his shearers is dumb. So he openeth not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment. And who shall declare his degenerations? For he was cut off from the land of the living. For the transgression of my people he was stricken. So that's very clear in there that that's talking about Jesus Christ. And that was before Jesus even came to the earth. And that was in Isaiah, talking about him suffering for man. So we've read that. Then we've got John 14, 9. Jesus said unto him, have I been with you so long, with you long time with you? And yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He hath seen me, hath seen the Father. How sayest thou then, show us the Father? So Jesus and the Father are one. So it's one God not many gods. The Holy Spirit to the Jehovah's Witness is God's power in action, but yet the Bible shows us that he's a person of the Trinity. They say the Holy Spirit is protecting God's every energy to place and accomplish his will. That's New Age teaching, to be honest. Who is the Holy Spirit? So many scriptures for the Holy Spirit. There's John 14, 25 to 26, Romans 8, 26 to 27, Matthew 12, 31 to 32, John 14, 16 to 17, John 4, 23. We must remember, but the hour is coming and now is when the true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. And that's through the Holy Spirit. We worship him through the Holy Spirit because he is the spirit of truth who leads us into all truth. The Bible shows God is spirit. Um, it's more power is a more than just a powerful force, and that he himself is also God. Ephesians 1.13, he is our guarantee we belong to Jesus, the stamp of God on us, the seal, as the Bible says. If you don't see the true Jesus, you won't be sealed by the true spirit of God. So to fight so to find who he really is, you need to read a true Bible. John 3.16 said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. It said begotten, not created in that scripture, as you can see. That whosoever believes on him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. So we need to believe that Jesus is firstly God. Secondly, he came in the flesh and died on the cross for all the sins of the world, including your own. And believe that and accept that and ask the Lord to forgive you of your sin and, and say, Lord, I'm sorry and I believe on you and I'm trusting in you to save me. And that's what will save you. Nothing else. No works, no good works. Nothing else you can add to that. Just believing that Jesus is who he says he is and his word is truth and you'll be saved. So I hope you've enjoyed listening to my talk today on the Jehovah's Witnesses. This show